Hello friends. So here the question says that how does free function get to know that how many bytes it has to deallocate, which was allocated by malloc function. So as you know that malloc function allocates the memory on the heap and this is done at dynamic time. So let's understand what does this question mean. So here like we have wrote in ptr equal to malloc and inside the malloc as an argument we have written some of the memory that it wants to allocate on the heap. So for our example let's take this n equal to 4 and size of int as let's say 8. So as you know this malloc function will allocate 4 chunks on this memory that is on this heap and let's say this each chunk is of 8 bytes so that means from 200 to 203 all the memory will be allocated by this malloc and this malloc will return this starting address that is 200 to ptr now the question means when we write free of ptr this is the syntax of free now free does not take n as the argument it takes only ptr as the argument that is free is having the address 200 now how does free get to know that it has to deallocate four chunks five chunks or six chunks how many chunks from this starting address 200 because it does not have any information of n so I hope the question is clear to you. The problem is free does not have the information of this n. So how does free get to know that starting from this PTR address that is 200, how many bytes it has to deallocate. So for this problem, we have two answers. That is there are two methods to store this n information. So these are the two ways to store our n. One is over allocating the memory. And second is using table or we can say a associative array. So let's understand one by one these two ways. So let's understand the first way that is over allocating the memory. So in this method when we are allocating the memory using malloc function let's say malloc says that it is giving me the memory starting from 200 to 203. So it will return 200 to the PTR as a return value. So this whole space starting from 200 to 203 is allocated on the heap and this 200 is returned to PTR. Now in this method we will allocate some extra memory to store the n. Now in the starting of this memory space we will allocate n equal to 4 that is this is a fixed space fixed memory space say size of int is 8 so this is 16 byte we will reserve to store our n so this is actually over allocating the memory so actually via this malloc function we were asking for 8 into 4 that is 32 that means from 200 to 203 this much of memory we were asking to allocate but we are allocating some extra memory from 198 to 199 to store our n. This means that we are over allocating the memory to store our n. Now our allocation is done. Now during deallocation that is when we write free ptr and this ptr means this starting address that is 200. So when free gets this 200 it does one extra work and what is that extra work? it fetches that n from this memory space and how does it fetch that n equal to 4 so as the compiler knows that it has stored that n equal to 4 to the starting of the 200 so it will just subtract some bytes from this starting address 200 and it will reach to 198 and it will read this n equal to 4 value from here and after that it will deallocate 4 bytes one by one 
from 200 to 203. So this way, this over allocating method works. Now let's understand how this second method that is using the table, it helps to resolve our problem to store the n. So in this method, we, what we are actually doing is we are taking a extra table or you can say associative array which will store the starting address and the value of n and what is that starting address this is starting address is actually this address the address returned by the malloc so what happens in this method is when we say pointer equal to malloc so as previously it will allocate some space on the heap so again here n equal to 4 so from 200 to 203 the space is allocated on this heap so this is the starting address 200 that is returned by the malloc and stored in the ptr now this was the allocation step by the malloc so here what we will do is we will store this 200 and the corresponding bytes that it has allocated it has allocated four chunks so we will store 200 comma 4 that is ptr comma n in this table now this information will be taken by the free during the deallocation so what will happen is when this free is passed this 200 then free will go to the this table and it will fetch the corresponding n that is 4 from here and it will deallocate four chunks starting from this 200 address so this way it will deallocate this n equal to four chunks from this heap so i hope you have understood that how does free get to know all this information of n so there are two ways first one is over allocating the memory and second is using the associative array now how does compiler or the operating system implements or the runtime understands all this information this is implementation dependent that how all this information is implemented so for your information this table also stores the other memory allocations which are done by the malloc so for example if there is second malloc in your program and say the n at that time is 8 so it will store the 8 and the starting address written by this malloc is say 400 so 400 will also be stored here so all the information of all the memory allocation and their corresponding n will be saved in this table so if you have any query please put down into comments if you like the video please subscribe the channel thank you for watching goodbye